Hello everybody, welcome back to Creation Myths for another 5-Minute Myth. This time we are going to tackle genetic entropy in, I hope, 5 minutes or less. Recall that genetic entropy is an idea from Dr. John Sanford, first coined in his 2005 book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome. The idea here is that genomes in general, and the human genome specifically, are degenerating inevitably. Sanford's theory is that mutations accumulate within populations, this is inevitable, fitness declines, and ultimately extinction will result. Sanford is very particular about this argument. He lays out a number of specific components and details that are required for his model to work, and here are those requirements. First is that virtually all mutations have a fixed negative effect, meaning that all mutations are harmful, and that effect on fitness does not change based on the context, like the ecological context, like the presence or absence of some predator or something. The second requirement is that the frequency of harmful mutations remains constant at approximately 100%, even as harmful mutations accumulate within a genome. And the third thing is that this accumulation is constant over generations. In other words, there is no selection that's able to weed out these mutations. There's no selection operating, so they just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. None of this is accurate. Every part of this model is wrong, so let's see why. First, virtually all mutations have fixed negative effects. No, they don't. That's just straight up wrong. For example, lactase persistence, that's a beneficial mutation with no downsides. Sickle cell disease, the sickle cell allele is harmful in the absence of malaria, but in populations in malaria endemic areas, the presence of that allele is beneficial because heterozygotes have resistance to malaria. In influenza, you could have an allele that confers resistance to Tamiflu that has a fitness cost associated with it, but if you have what's called a compensatory mutation, a second mutation in that same genome, then that recovers the fitness cost. So the genetic context matters. And then there's the example of the tuskless allele in elephants, which is beneficial in the context of human hunting. So virtually all mutations have fixed negative effects. That is false. The second requirement is a constant frequency of harmful mutations. Sanford is very clear about this. Even as mutations occur, the frequency of future mutations in terms of their effects stays almost entirely deleterious. Again, deleterious means harmful, not that it deletes anything. So Sanford says, as mutations accumulate, the deleterious mutations remain at about 100%, and the beneficial and truly neutral mutations are close to 0%, basically 0%. This is just mathematically impossible, because for every deleterious mutation that occurs, the reverse mutation becomes possible, and that is necessarily, according to Sanford's own logic, a beneficial mutation. So eventually, as deleterious mutations accumulate, you reach an equilibrium, where the frequency of possible deleterious mutations is equal to the frequency of possible beneficial and neutral mutations. You have to reach this equilibrium. So can deleterious mutations occur at a constant frequency over time? No, they cannot. That is also false. And then finally, Sanford says you have constant mutation accumulation over generations, and you can't get rid of them. In other words, no selection. What Sanford says is that as mutations accumulate, the population is going to get worse uniformly. So mutations increase, and you approach this threshold of viability over generations. And once you hit that threshold, you keep having mutations accumulating because you can't select them out, even when there's a fitness cost. In real life, mutations are going to occur that's going to cause variation within a population because everyone's going to get different random mutations, and the individuals that cross that threshold into inviability, those mutations or those genotypes are going to get selected out. The rest of the population is going to be fine. So the result is an equilibrium right around this tipping point that's called mutation selection balance. So can mutations accumulate constantly over generations with absolutely no selection? No, they cannot. That is also false. So, Sanford's conditions for genetic entropy, virtually all mutations are inherently harmful. That is false. Mutations have to accumulate constantly, at a constant rate. That is also false. And there can be no selection removing them from the population. That is also false. All of these things are required for genetic entropy according to the guy who invented the concept and coined the term. And all of them are completely wrong. And for that reason, genetic entropy is a myth. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, give me a subscribe, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and uh, share it with your friends who also like arguing with creationists. Keep an eye out for more stuff like this in the future, and until then, don't get fooled.